This video is for educational purposes only. Only test your own hardware. Doing otherwise is illegal. Don't be a skid. What's going on, you guys? It is The Talking Sasquatch, and it's great to have you back. So, chances are, if you're watching this video, you've got one of these guys, or one of these guys. And those are the HackRF H4M and H2M, respectively. Now, one of the things you might not realize when getting your HackRF is that sometimes when you order them, it doesn't come pre-flashed. So before running to Rabbit Lab support asking things like, help, my HackRF has nothing but a blank screen, or you sold me a broken HackRF and the screen won't turn on, or I think my H2M or H4M is broken, the LEDs come on but the screen just flashes, I'm going to show you the super simple process of actually flashing the firmware onto your HackRF. I'm also going to show you how to upgrade to the latest Mayhem firmware using the web flasher and put all the SD card files on there that you need, so this thing is ready to go. So if you've got a brand new HackRF, this is the video for you. Let's get at it. All right, so right off the top, I want to start with a disclaimer. The HackRF is an extremely, extremely cool tool in learning things about radio frequencies. Being able to visualize radio frequencies makes it so much easier to learn, and that's one of the reasons why I really love the HackRF. At the same time, the HackRF is also able to transmit or broadcast, which means that you can send signals out just as easily as you can receive them. And there are many frequencies that you are not allowed to transmit at, especially if you don't have a license. Now, I've already made a series of beginner videos on the HackRF showing you how to use the Mayhem firmware and how a lot of the apps work. So once you have your HackRF flashed and ready to go, you can check out all those videos and learn all about the HackRF and the Mayhem firmware. Now, before we get into it, I wanted to show you something that one amazing creator sent me. My buddy Tron over at Xtronics actually sent over these absolutely gorgeous cases he made for Rabbit Labs boards. Like this absolutely epic case for the Ghost ESP board. The attention to detail, all of these small things. I know how hard this stuff is to print in. I know how hard it is to design. He absolutely killed it with this. And then here's one for the Slim Shady IR Blaster. He's got the dual color silk on there. It's so, so nice. Really well designed. I love all of this. It clips right on the back. I mean, Fantastic work on this board. And then my favorite one is this case for the flux capacitor. It's absolutely gorgeous. It's so cool. It's got a pin cover that actually slides out. It's kind of like a pager. Very, very cool. You can see it comes out like that. And then we have on the bottom here, that's actually UV cured resin right there over the Tron and stuff. So it just looks so good, so polished, so finished. It looks fantastic. I have to say, Tron, you did a great job on all of these. Link down below to the store. These are great. Absolutely support your local creator. And you know what I also want to support is this segue to today's sponsor, PCBWay. PCBWay is your one-stop shop for PCB design, manufacture, CNC, 3D printing, sheet metal fabrication, and more. They have engineers on site that will help you every single step of the process. It couldn't be easier. No matter what the project is, PCBWay will be with you every step of the way to make sure your project comes from concept to reality. And I say it all the time, always check out the module store. They're adding more and more stuff there. They've got tools, they've got things that I've used for screens, they've got PCBs, they have everything. As always, thank you so much PCBWay for your continued support. You guys are absolutely awesome. Let's get back at it. All right, so first things first, you've got a hack RF. You're gonna need an SD card because without one of those, you're kind of not going anywhere in a hurry. All right, so keep in mind with SD cards, individual results may vary. If you have a really cheap, really crappy SD card, there's a good chance you're gonna run into problems with it. So throw out that crap generic SD card you got from Walgreens or whatever, and pick up something like this from Rabbit Labs. Now this is an eight gig SD card from Rabbit Labs. It's gonna be big enough to do everything you need on the HackRF, and it's even got really cool silk screening. I mean, check it out, that is super cool. It's got the little mad rabbit down there. I love it. All right, so let's rip this bad boy open and get it into our HackRF. So actually it opens pretty easily. Actually came out a lot easier than I thought it would. All right, so we'll take our HackRF and our micro SD card. We're gonna make it so that the terminals are pointing forward or towards the screen pop it in the little little slot on top it makes a little happy face well i guess it's kind of <laughs> face either way pop that in there and then you kind of need to poke it with something because it goes in pretty far i'm going to use my jimmy long's uh j hook or whatever they call this one 
I know the lockpick guys out there are like, no, that's this hook. I mean, sorry, I forgot. But we're in, we're ready to go. All right, so quick little hack RF anatomy lesson. There are two buttons on the top right next to the SD card slot. This one right here is the reset button. And then this one right here is the DFU button. Now I like to call the DFU button the don't fuck up button, but it's actually the device firmware upgrade button. Now we wanna actually enter the DFU mode and I found the easiest way to do it is just to simply hold the DFU button and then turn the device on. So when it's on, you're gonna notice the screen doesn't show anything, but the little LEDs on top actually light up so you know that we're in DFU mode. Now, people have mentioned that sometimes it's tricky entering DFU mode, so I'm gonna actually read off three different things that you can do. That's not two, this is, okay, three, I can count. I'm gonna read off three different ways to get into DFU mode. So one is to press and hold the DFU button, then plug the USB cable in, then release the DFU button. Another option is press holding the DFU button, then single press the knob, that would be the H2M knob, then release the DFU button, then plug the USB cable in. And a third method you can try, third, plug in the USB, press and hold the DFU button, unplug the USB, release the DFU button, and then plug the USB back in. If one of those methods doesn't work for you, chances are you've probably got a dead battery. We're going to go ahead and plug in our USB cable that you know carries data. I feel like I say this every single video. You don't know your cable carries data 100% make sure you find a cable that you know does. So we're gonna take this guy, plug that right into here, boom. Shouldn't change anything, still looks exactly the same, but now we're plugged into our computer, ready to flash it. So you know what time it is, ready to head on over to the desktop. And we're gonna navigate ourselves over to the Mayhem Firmware GitHub, link down below. So once you get to here, all we're gonna do is scroll down to the releases right here, click on that. The version may be different because it may be newer, doesn't matter, all this works the same. Scroll all the way down here and we're going to download doo -doo -doo, the Mayhem Firmware right here. We're gonna deal with all these files in a second, but Mayhem Firmware. So first we'll download that. I'm gonna save this over to my desktop. And then we're also gonna copy the, or save, the copy to SD card files this is gonna have the world map on it you don't need the world map but I don't know I like having it on my hack RF so we'll download that as well and we'll take care of that in just a minute now that we have those downloaded we'll go down to the desktop we'll open up the mayhem firmware do 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 it's gonna open in the wrong monitor because it always does and we're gonna find this DFU hack RF one dot bat we're gonna go ahead and run that file and it'll probably bring up a window that tells me it's dangerous or scary but it's fine up oh, Make sure to extract all your files first, folks. All right, even I do stupid mistakes. So here we go. Takes literally no time at all. Close the other one. And then yeah, DFU hack rf onebat Now this works on Windows. There is a different process on Mac OS or Linux. Unfortunately, I don't have Mac OS when I don't feel like doing it on Kali right now, but this is how to do it on Windows. So we're gonna open this up. Is it selling it's scary? Yes, it does tell me it's scary, but we know that it's a bat file, which means this could literally be anything. Don't just go running bat files all willy-nilly, but this one I can promise you, it's okay. Run anyway. Boop doo. So we're already in the HackRF DFU mode, so that should be fine. Let's press a key and no DFU capable device yet. <laughs> I do wrong? Let's see if we can figure that out. Womp womp. So what happened was I've used the hacker F a bunch of times before, but I just realized I don't have the DFU drivers installed on this computer. So easy enough fix. It's right here. Go to driver and then right here on the DFU, uh, lpcdfu.inf, right click on that, go to install and then restart your computer and it's gonna work no problem because now we'll go back to our DFU hack rf onebat double click that, press a key and Bam, we're in business. So now if we take a look at our HackRF, we have the HackRF mode. So basically you can't see that, but yeah, see there's there's icons on there. That means we can go ahead and flash this super, super good. So the next step we're gonna do is go ahead and go to the HackRF flasher. So let's close this. And from there, we're gonna go and head over to hackrf.app, which we have opened up right here. Click connect device and it doesn't show up because it's kind of in hackrf mode. We're just gonna go ahead and restart it. So we're gonna turn it off and on, but you can't, we're gonna unplug it. I'm gonna plug it back in and then boom, pops up right there. Click connect and now we can update it. So right now it's gonna actually look like it's already working because again, this is already pre-flashed, but all we're gonna do is go down to manage firmware we're gonna go update to the latest stable release if you wanna be uh, safe, or you can go to nightly if you wanna be spicy. But yeah, that's gonna go ahead and update our firmware on the HackRF itself. 
We'll be right back. And then you'll see it's going through an unpacking stuff right there. That's all perfectly normal. Wait for this to finish. And yeah, you should be good to go. Many, many unbearable moments later. And just like that, you should have a working hack RF. Very, very cool. So what we're going to do from here, now that we have things working, is I'm going to go ahead and actually I'll show you on the screen and then we'll kind of work around it. So uh, I can close this. If I scroll up, you can see the actual screen on the hack RF, which is important. So from here, actually, if I use these buttons, it'll actually show up on the screen. But we're going to go down to, can I just click on utilities? Is that going to work? Yeah. We're going to go to utilities and then SD over USB. Because remember those SD card files we talked about earlier? We're going to want those. So we're going to go ahead and I'm going to close this window because I, I'm pretty sure it's going to screw everything up. We'll close this, minimize to the desktop. I'm going to click run. And then hopefully this pops up in just a second as a USB storage device. Here it is right here. Fantastic. That's awesome. So now we're going to go ahead and find our copy to SD card assets. Open all this stuff up. So these are all of the SD card assets that we want to copy over. So if you notice in apps and stuff, we have all that there. This is a brand new SD card, so it doesn't have any of the files on it. So all we have to do is basically control A, copy all of those. Go over to the SD card over here, control V, and it'll copy everything. Should take a little while because it's over SPI or whatever. For fancy reasons, this takes a second or two, but give it time, it'll get there. Now, conversely, you can just pop the SD card out, put it into like an SD card adapter like this guy right there. This will make this whole process work way faster, but again, this says five hours, so I'm actually just gonna go ahead and do that and show you the results. Nope. All right, let's try this with the USB adapter. So let's see how much faster this is. Control A to copy over to my uh, USB or my USB, my SD card, paste. Now let's see how long this is gonna take. Hey, we're down to about 12 minutes, which is way, way better. So yeah, in a few minutes, we'll be right back. And now back to our show. Hey, and just like that, we're done. We've got all of our files moved over and we can plug it back into our HackRF. But one thing I'm gonna do real quick is if we go into this splash folder right here, you can put splash screens in here. You can actually put them in any folder, but it's easier. I'm going to drop my Mayhem splash image over here. If you want to find mine, check it out over at, where was this? They're actually available over here at this website. It's ppsplash.creativo.hu, link down below. But you can see all the different splash screens. Mine's in there too if you go far enough. So definitely check those out. Cool. So I'm just going to go ahead and take my card out, pop it back into the hack RF. Let's get in there. Remember, terminals towards the screen. Still can't push it in with my fingernail, so J-hook. All right, and then power it on. With any luck, we'll turn on, no problem. Cool, so it's got the original Mayhem splash screen. So what we're gonna do is, and I can actually pull it back up on the screen. So let me plug it back in, plug back in. We're gonna navigate back to hackrf.app. Here we go, it says hackrf connected already. Gonna go into utilities, gonna go to file manager going to navigate down to splash screens, splash screens, and then we're going to go into splash.bmp. That's what I set it as. There we go. Cool. And then you'll see my, my screen comes up right here. And all I'm supposed to do is press the right button to update the splash screen. That's the right button right there. Cool. So then theoretically, when I reboot, let's see if this works. Hey, just like that, you can see my splash on the screen and you can do the very same thing. Very cool. All right. So now you should have a hack RF ready to go. Everything you need to get started with your hack RF. So now I have three more videos for you guys to watch. It goes over antennas, goes over application, goes over everything you need just to learn how to use the HackRF. So I hope you have an absolute blast with your HackRF. I love this little device. It's so much fun. Thank you so much for watching. Please make sure to like, comment, subscribe. You guys are absolute legends. We'll catch you next time.